to you by Roberts and Roberts, attorneys at law. Lots of sunshine outside right now. We do have a few passing clouds, but no rain coming out of those clouds, and that will be the case really for the foreseeable future. High temperatures will top out in the upper 90s for the day, and as we look at the forecast first, we will fall to 94 at 8 o'clock, 88 by 10, 84 by midnight tonight with mostly clear skies. The news starts right now. Coming up, big efforts to save a small Christian nonprofit school in Tyler. The financial issues that could force it to shut down. Also combating the national truck driver shortage, the new facility in East Texas ready to train a new fleet of drivers. And the State Fair of Texas has banned guns on fairgrounds this year. Here are the reason why and the response from our state lawmakers. Local, experienced, trusted. This is KETK News at 6. Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for being here. I'm Casey Koviak. And I'm Isaac Ramirez. We're glad to have you with us. All right, new this evening, a small East Texas Christian school is in danger of shutting down. Kingdom Life Academy in North Tyler is home to students who need more than just a traditional education. KETK's Ashlyn Anderson joins us from the school and explains the financial problems they are facing. Ashlyn. Casey Isaac Kingdom Life Academy behind me is near Bolter Middle School. They're in their 11th year and serve nearly 20 students. The nonprofit focuses on children who are unable to thrive in a traditional school and giving them a second chance. Founder Joel Inge says primarily the school is funded through private donors and community donations. Parents of students also pay tuition on a sliding scale because many of them come from low income households. In the last year, the founder says donations have dwindled. The school has lost its monthly support and is now operating on half of the money they would normally receive. He blames the dire situation on the economy and inflation. I think it's really attributed to um, you know what's going on within the country, the economy, inflation, and and where families are struggling. You know, people are struggling across the board, and so with discretionary spending, where people are you know tightening their belts economically, and and so we're not receiving the donations that we've received in the past. To save on costs, the school has tried to raise tuition as much as they can and is reducing electrical use by turning lights off in rooms students aren't in and raising the temperature on the AC. The academy is working to raise $100,000 to get them through the end of this year. If you would like to donate, we have a link on our website right now at k2k.com. In Tyler Ashland Anderson, back to you. Ashlyn, thank you. New details into our newsroom this evening. A 23 year old man has been arrested following a deadly head on accident this morning. It happened on Highway 31 and one person was killed. The driver has been identified as Cesar Viramontes. He is now facing charges of intoxication manslaughter. According to DPS arrest papers, Vera Montes was traveling west shortly after midnight when he swerved into oncoming traffic and struck another vehicle head on, killing the driver. Now that driver has been identified as Maria Hernandez of Tyler. The third vehicle involved was an 18 wheeler. That driver was not injured. With a nationwide truck driver shortage, an East Texas college is working to bridge the gap with a new transportation institute. Yeah, it's pretty cool. KETK's Rachel Davis spoke with instructors about the importance of training the next generation of drivers. Kilgore College has been training truck drivers on campus since 2010. Now, their program is expanding with a rising need. Shortage, top 60,000 drivers nationally. Kilgore College instructor Elizabeth Lehman says it stems from tighter regulations industry wide. Safety, safety, safety. So it's not just a driver, it is a safe driver. It is one that has been trained properly prior to going to where they're going. With industry officials cracking down on a driver's educational background. And a lot of companies are looking into that. Where did you come from? How many hours behind the wheel did you get? What institution did you go to? And some people that are going to these regular little schools that might not be accredited, 
And according to the American Journal of Transportation, by 2030, there will be a shortage of 16,000 drivers. Kilgore College held a ribbon cutting to open a new institute. And we hope to be able to run that up to 250 to 300 students a year that graduate this program to be able to fill the need for the, for the local companies. That's compared to the 50 to 80 students in their program in years past. Dwayne Shaw says these expanded facilities have a lot to offer future students. You know, as far as a teaching classroom, we've got everything that they'll need in a teaching class, in, in a normal teaching classroom, and this phenomenal track around the outside to be able to uh, simulate most of the things that they're going to see on the road. Because as student turn instructor Connor Durham says, the more real world experience they get, the better off students will be. Yeah, my background stems from some oil field work, mainly lineman work, uh, bucket trucks, pole trailers. With the goal that these new facilities would prepare future students for anything the winding roads would throw their way. To make sure that we do put the safest drivers out there for, you know, for, for your family, for my family. I want to make sure that someone who's operating one of these, these very needed but very huge vehicles is doing it in the safest possible way. Re and that was Rachel Davis reporting. Today, Tyler City Council approved a project to update four high traffic railroad crossings around the city. Most changes will be made downtown to transition several one way streets into two way crossings on East Locust, East Ferguson, East Irwin and Lake Street will have to be replaced. The work will be carried out through a partnership with Union Pacific Railroad using the results of the 2022 downtown traffic study. Initially plans should be done in the next 24 months. A developing story out of the Dallas area where Texas lawmakers are pushing back against the state fair after the board decided to ban firearms on the fairgrounds yeah. this year. Many are shocked about yeah. this decision. More than 70 lawmakers are demanding the fair rescind that policy, pointing to laws preventing gun bans on government land. KETK's Ryan Chandler reports on this controversy. The fair under fire. So know that the measures we take are to protect everyone. But top Republicans say their ban on firearms is illegal. Attorney General Ken Paxton Wednesday threatening to sue the city of Dallas if they don't force the fair to change course. Some legislators call it un-Texan. Uh, it's not very Texan to walk under big text and say, no, the Second Amendment's not welcome here at the state fair, right? It's a legal debate between gun rights and property rights. The fair is operated by a private entity, not the city of Dallas. But Dallas leases the park to the fair, and state law prohibits firearm bans on government land. Clearly, they're in violation of the law. Their contention is baseless. But the fair has dealt with gun violence in the past. Last year, three people were injured in this shooting. When a man without a license to carry opened fire. We need to pass common sense gun laws because the real threat to safety is an abundance of unregulated firearms in public. We need to prioritize the safety of people. And it looks like the state fair took that into consideration with this decision. The fair has stood by their policy. They tell us they stand ready to cooperate with the city of Dallas as needed. And they say they'll have more than 200 police officers and safety team members on scene this year. Paxton says Dallas has 15 days to make the fair change course, or he'll see them in court. Ryan Chandler, KETK News. Back here in East Texas, a decent handful of local districts headed back to the classroom today, including our largest district in East Texas, Tyler ISD. Here are some of the pictures of students walking in this morning at some of the different campuses, including Clarkston Elementary, Caldwell Arts Academy, Tyler Legacy High School and Jack Elementary. The district is home to more than 18 thousand students. I like that red carpet they rolled out for the students yeah, there. Fancy and Greg County today. We spent the first day of school actually at Pine Tree ISD in Longview. KTK's Avery Klinowski heard from students who headed back onto campus for another school year. First day of school kicking off the 24 25 school year. Can't believe I'm saying that Wednesday Pine Tree Independent School District in Longview had their first day of classes. Really it's excited. a great day to be a pirate. Faculty and students were happy to be back on campus at Parkway Elementary. Superintendent Steve Clugston says they are ready to lead students to success. As we work in tandem, you know, it's a, 
we're, a, we're an extension of the family, and if we do a really good job here and you're doing a really good job, then the, the odds of your kid being successful are, are all but guaranteed. For the Pirates, this year's theme is building rock stars and changing lives. That rock star puts on, on the great show. So if, if, if all of our staff is rock stars and we're putting on the, a top-notch quality show every day in the classroom, then our kids are benefiting from that. Encouraging all students to be confident in themselves outside of school and in the classroom. My big goal this year is to get a bunch of A's. Make sure that we get kids you know, to the level they need to be at and have the habits they got to have to go out in this world and, and make it a better place. Bringing those first day feelings of excitement to class each and every day. Parkway, what we do here is we learn, we show respect, and we work hard. Building up young minds, teaching them that they are capable of achieving their goals. Avery Klinowski, KETK News. I'm sure he had a great first day of school. Oh my gosh. Coming up on KETK News at 6, we're switching gears as Hurricane Ernesto sets its path toward the tiny island of Bermuda. A look at the trail of destruction it left behind in the Caribbean. And the Longview Lobos will be looking for playmakers all over the field, including at the quarterback position. Later in sports, see what it'll take to earn the starting spot behind center. Carson. Pretty rough to be out practicing football today for those upcoming high school football seasons because it has been hot, it has been humid, and we do have triple digits in your forecast. We'll discuss those details coming up. Welcome back, Ernesto strengthening to a hurricane this evening as it hit Puerto Rico this morning. Ernesto causing damage to roadways and infrastructure with half of that island now without power. Oh, the storm also causing districts to cancel the first day of classes in Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands. Also, more than 140 flights were canceled to and from Puerto Rico. This evening, President Biden approved an emergency declaration for Puerto Rico. Meanwhile, a very different situation here in East Texas. Carson, mm -hmm. we're actually needing some rain yeah. now. It is getting toasty yeah. out there. And it's just going to continue to get drier with the lack of rain I have in the forecast and the fact that we'll be in the triple digits um, while at the time we're not seeing any rainfall. So as we take a, a look at the uh, Plaza Tower looking off to the north, a few clouds here and there. The sunshine has dominated though and that got us up to 98 degrees today. The normal is 96, 108 back in 1939. That was your record high temperature and I'm sure most of you are glad we did not get up to 108 today. Here's a look at the triple tracker. Three 
observed 100 degree days in Tyler so far. I do expect that number to go up, but what's interesting is Longview. You guys haven't seen a triple digit day and Lufkin. You guys haven't seen one either and temperatures. They're hot. It feels like we are at 100 degrees, but we are not. We are in the mid 90s right now. Two points in the lower 70s, so quite a bit of Gulf moisture. So instead of it being 96 in Tyler, it feels like we are at 104 and it also feels that way in both Nacogdoches and Lufkin as well. As we look at today's for tonight's forecast, rather, we're down to 78. We will see a few clouds around daybreak tomorrow morning. We rebound quickly, though 99 degrees. That's your high temperature tomorrow. Heat index values in excess of 105. That is in your forecast, and we will continue to see that uh, with this weather pattern that we have in place. We've got a ridge of high pressure out to our west. We're not going to be saved by this front that continues to pivot further and further off to the east, and that's just allowing this wide area of heat advisories and excessive heat warnings to be reissued day after day and unfortunately that is going to be the case at least over the next week with how stagnant this weather pattern is going to be. So with highs in the 90s and 100s that really limits our rain chances and it dries us out because while we're having these above normal temperatures over the next six to 10 days, we don't see any beneficial rainfall, but we are continuing to track Ernesto. It has become well defined over the last 24 or so hours. Hours, and you can see that blow of convection, some darker shades showing up on this tracking the tropics graphic here that indicates colder cloud tops, which means they're higher cloud tops, and that means the storm is strengthening. So here's what we are looking at 75 mile per hour winds at the center of circulation, and this thing is going to continue to track up to the north and northeast, perhaps hitting Bermuda as a category two or a category three hurricane, but this will not impact the US at this time, which I think is outstanding news. Here's a look at the next seven days. Upper 90s tomorrow, triple digit temperatures. Folks, we could have a streak of them starting Friday. Could alternate between 100, 101, and 102 over the next several days. And then as we look at Deep East Texas, we're following the same trend. It will take a little more energy to get us up to 100 degrees by the end of the weekend. Isaac, Casey. Carson, thank you. Coming up, Baylor is hoping for a better season in 2024, and we'll be relying on some East Texas talent in the backfield, Garrett. Yes, right, Isaac. We saw what Dawson Pentegrass could do during his time at Mineola, and we got an a glimpse of what last year in Waco after the break we're going to hear from the former yellow jacket as he hopes to be the catalyst that turns that Baylor football program around. You're watching KDK News 6.
2023 was not a great season for the Baylor Bears football team who finished the year with a three and nine record. But while success on the field was difficult, they did find a new offensive weapon from East Texas for Mineola running back Dawson Pendergrass. He was great for Baylor as a freshman in 2023. The East Texan played in 11 games, was a top offensive threat out of the backfield, rushing for 338 yards, scoring a team high five touchdowns, along with catching passes and returning kicks. The Bears will be using a number of players at running back with Pendergrass, part of that rotation. But while he did have a strong start to his college career, he hopes Baylor will be able to pick up more victories during his sophomore campaign. We really didn't have this chip on our shoulder as we do this year. You know, it was uh, it was really embarrassing going like three and nine. You got to like walk around campus. It's kind of it's kind of like uh, help, like hurts your confidence a little. But I know we none of us want to go through that again. So I mean, we all got that chip on our shoulder, and I keep that. I think that's just what keeps us moving. Baylor going to open the season at home. They're going to when Tarleton State comes to town. Kickoff will be Saturday, August 31st at 6 p.m. from McLean Stadium in Waco. Lawview Lobos will be making their return to the 6A ranks this season. And according to head coach John King, there are plenty of open spots on the team, including starting quarterback. Right now, Maverick Rowe is getting the most snaps for the first team and was able to start a few games last season. But Mav understands he, like the rest of the Lobos, will have to earn their spot on the field and says he looks forward to this QB battle here in fall camp. Coming into the offseason, I knew I had a chip on my shoulder and I knew we had a bunch of work to do in a bunch of open spaces and I knew I had to take that leader role and kind of take control of the locker room and be that leader people can look up to. And so I've enjoyed it. So it'll be fun. Definitely motivated than ever, you know, coming off that tough loss to Lancaster. Hard one to swallow, but we're going to bounce back this year and see what happens. We got 32 lettermen back and, and uh, five starters on offense, four on defense. So, I mean, we do have a little bit of experience. But we got a lot of inexperience in some key spots, you know, and, uh, you know, there's some guys back, as I mentioned, that had varsity experience. You know, Maverick Rose started a couple of varsity games for us last year. He played quite a bit. Some of those other guys uh, did as well. You know, those guys should know what to do and, and know the speed and the effort it's going to take to uh, be successful. While Lombi is joining a new district, they will open the season against one of their oldest rivals, Lobos, taking on the Lufkin Panthers in Lufkin on August 30th. Kickoff will be 730 from Abe Martin Stadium. And that's all for sports. We'll be right back. You're watching KETK News at 6. 
local, experienced, trusted. Welcome back everyone. Swepco has issued an alert for customers warning them of a recent scam making the rounds. The power company says a solar panel salesperson claiming to be a partner with Swepco is selling solar panels for customers homes. But Swepco says this is absolutely not the case and they are in no way partnered with these solar panel salespeople. If you've had this happen to you or you have fallen victim, they suggest calling an attorney general's office and filing a complaint online. Payne Springs Fire Rescue has received more than a quarter of a million dollars to replace outdated firefighter breathing equipment. The money comes from FEMA's Firefighters Grant Program. The more than $229,000 will help the department update the tanks and equipment firefighters use to breathe in clear, clean air when battling fires. The department says some of these breathing tools are outdated, aging and more than 20 years old and replacing them was their number one priority for firefighter safety. KETK's primetime lineup is brought to you by the Sinclair Law Office. Tonight in primetime. Prime All right, America's Got Talent starts at 7, then at 8. It's the Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon. 10th anniversary special, followed, of course, by KETK News at 10. Every August, so we help clear the shelters around East Texas as part of the national campaign of Clear the Shelters. We're partnering with local shelters and rescues to help find loving homes. It's also a time to emphasize the importance of not only adoption, but supporting our local shelters and rescues through donations, volunteering, and fostering, as well as being a responsible pet owner by microchipping and getting your pet spayed or neutered. We're currently hosting a pet supply drive. If you're interested in donating, you can drop off supplies at our station on the loop next to the jalapeno tree in Tyler from now until August 23rd during normal business hours. And of course, we appreciate the support tremendously. Every year, East Texans follow through with that and, and help us out. So thank you. Yes. All right, coming up after the break, a final look at your forecast. Stay with us.
Here's a look at the seven day forecast. We'll be in the upper 90s and lower 100s each of the next several days, so slightly above normal for this time of year. But we see triple digits, so that is nothing out of the ordinary. And I tell you, Garrett, I feel for these kiddos that are having to go out there and do two a days, but they're working hard. It's been tough. We start Friday football fever August 30th. It's going to be hot, but it's going to be fun this year. It is. All right. Thank you very much for watching KTK News at 6. We'll see you back here at 10.